trying to squeeze a few more years out of my life. I've been on, on one form or another of these e-cigarettes for a couple of years now. Uh, I still smoke a cigarette occasionally, uh, but I'm way better than what it was. Yeah, and the e-cigarette seems to work because Daryl, like, he used it for, what, a week or two weeks, and he was clear off of it. And I know another guy who told me his wife went on. She smoked for 30 years. She buys one 30 days. She was off of it. Daryl smoked for 22 years. Yeah. And see, and that's the thing. With me, I don't think it's so much uh, as it is a nicotine. It's more of a physical habit. Yeah. And I find myself sucking on this more than I would a cigarette. Well, you can take that down and no nicotine whatsoever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can you can have them completely nicotine free. Uh, there ain't been a whole lot of studies on them, but I did see uh, where somebody was talking. They said that uh, uh, I think as you're using it, it restricts somehow your your lung capacity or something. But that does? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And, but I don't know if it's true or not. I heard it's about some kind of fungus, but I don't even know if that's true. I mean, yeah, well, they say fire. like these tanks. Right. Get that, fungus yeah, though. if you would leave that lay and not use it for a week and then take it up, more than likely some uh, mold or fungus build up in there. Is there a way to clean it? Or? Well, I have some other tanks at the house, and what I do is I just take them all apart and drain them. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't, I don't even set around any amount of time with you so. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're they're usually so inexpensive. Uh, if you think it ain't performing right, you just go buy another right. one for five bucks. That'd be the smartest move. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but you know, I use mine. They say like when you hit the button and suck through it, then that eats it back up. Mm -hmm. And uh, daily, daily use, so you don't have to worry about the fungus or anything. Right. Just be if you left it set around for a couple of weeks and then picked it up and take a hit of it, and you're probably going to pass out, wake up with some fat guy with tar and duct tape on him, okay. trying to rob your ass. Uh, yeah, look, I, I don't understand. Why don't he get a group going, get a doctor in his group? I mean, he's studying the crazy study, I guess, on, on mine, and then I can figure out what he's doing. To learn how to operate on people. Yeah, you can probably find a lot of stuff. Oh, you can find anything, yeah. But uh, with being good at it. See, his problem is, you know, a lot of people go like get a pig, and they say it's kind of close to a human body. Well, he he gave himself a pig laid down on the table. He started cutting it. Next thing you know, he's eating the ribs. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't stop. He couldn't learn anything about surgery. Give him a but, baby bag. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd be too busy eating that thing. Yeah, but like I said, the worst part about that is, it. I mean, I'm sure he's not the only one in the country right. that was thinking that. But there's someone that's really high qualified to do something that he's trying yeah. to do, which he'll never do. And honestly, uh, whether you would intend to do that or not, say you was the type of person, uh, it was just you and your family, and you had nobody, and, and you only had a few months of uh, supply. Maybe you had no supply. And, and, and by nature, you're just a nice, friendly guy. Uh, something happens, and then now your family's starving to death. You may find yourself doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. You know, you know, you, you've never thought about doing that, but now all at once, you know, uh, you got somebody out trying to steal something. Yeah. And, and with the intentions, I'll, I'll go down to that old lady's house. I'll grab some of her food, but things go wrong, and the next thing you know, somebody's dead. Yeah. The thing about it is, you're the most honest person when your wife started it up, your kids started it up, you're going to go out and steal something yeah, for them. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to do in right. situations like that. And then I've seen there uh, a couple of people were talking about when to bug out. When would you bug out? And uh, I think like the, the obvious thing is that, you know, like me, I live in the city live on the corner, bad neighborhood, old wood frame house, built back in 1924, I believe. Uh, if somebody wanted in my house, whether I was there or not, uh, they're going to come in. So for me to try to stay there under whatever this, this bad condition would be that, that would cause the shit hitting the fan, I have to leave. Because it basically would be like me and my wife and my son and his girlfriend. Yeah, we got some guns, we got some ammo. Uh, if you were to stand on your roof and 
you could shoot somebody every time they try to break in your house. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of ammo. Or they burn, burn your house down. Yeah, or, or they're going to burn you out. So you know you've got to leave. And when I bug out, I actually have no intention to return to my house. Because once I know I bug out, now i got all the local thugs that ain't got their head screwed on straight. They're going, hey, look, that guy's got a big screen TV, grab it. You know, by the time I, by the time I ever got home, whether it was two days, two weeks, two months, I'm coming back to nothing. Uh, so when I leave, it's for good. I know I'll never be able to return to that house. Right. No way. So well, if something that bad happens, I mean, you'll be here. We'll be out here at the other location. So we like, stay here first, and then when things really get bad, four wheelers if we have to. It's not the other 18 miles. But you know, there's so many scenarios on when shit hits the fan, and nobody knows what it'll really ever be. I mean, it could be the collapse of the economy, uh, could be uh, the solar flares, uh, but then again, thanks to uh, uh, that blackout show, hey, don't worry, it'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll go without lights for a couple of weeks, but it'll be a happy ending. Yeah. You know, don't worry about it. You'll be found. Life will be good again. Well, just like it showed in that, and if that actually happened, well, they claimed it was what a cyber attack on the grid. That's yeah, that's pretty you know. dumb. Uh, and I'm thinking, like everything comes from China, our computers and stuff. What would stop the Chinese from putting all these back doors in there? And maybe that's what they've already done, you know what I mean? They got ink in any of our computers. You know, I think everything we got from China, and the software you get from China. Now, I'm sure there's some kind of security over here to check stuff, but I, you know, have no clue. Well, who knows? Uh, and just like there. Say some foreign power did go in through the back door of the computers and shut the power grid down. We got to rely on our government to get it back up. They can't even get that unmerciful Obamacare website yeah. website running yeah and, and that takes you into a whole new uh, thing about Obamacare they keep talking about Obamacare is good for this Obamacare is good for that well you know what if you live on welfare or you're 90 years old where you already got some kind of coverage you don't have to worry about it but middle class person uh, at the end of, at the end of their month they're lucky to have a hundred bucks 200 bucks how, how are you gonna come up with thirteen hundred dollars a month to pay your your Obamacare, and uh, what happens to you when you don't pay? Nobody seems to be talking about that. That's why this is uh, Obamacare was forced through the IRS because everything's already uh, in place to prosecute people. The IRS has been prosecuting people for how many years now? Uh, so here's some middle class guy with a family. He can't afford uh, to pay Obamacare. Uh, he gets audited. Oh, you ain't paid your Obamacare in two months. This guy's going to jail. That that is the ultimate. First, they say they're going to try to take the driver's license. Then, if you own a home or property, they're going to take that. Last result, guess what? You're going to prison. There's a lot of people every year that go to prison because they owe the government ten or twenty thousand dollars. The thing about living is supposed to be a free country, and you buy what you want to buy, not be forced to buy anything, and then be forced to buy. It. And, yeah, and and like I said, how many people? I mean, they call it, but I call myself the lower middle class because some of these people they call middle class to me is somebody that, that's near rich. You know, that's some family. I don't care. You might have three of your kids, but you know what? You're making over $100,000 a year. Uh, in this, this area, uh, a combined salary, say you and your wife, if you could, if you could just rake in $40,000 a year, you think you're doing good. But at the end of the month, you don't have that kind of money to pay for a bond care. Well, if I'm wrong or not, Tom, the, the deductibles on that's real high, too. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Say so I, if you did afford it, something happened, you yeah. can't pay your deductibles. You know, here, here, here you are. Say, say you can afford $1,400 a month for a bond care. Now you got there at the hospital. You was in a rack, whatever. Doctor says, we got to uh, reconstruct the bones in your leg, whatever. Operation is going to cost twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. Now your deductible is fifteen thousand. Yeah. Where are you getting that from? Where are you getting that from? So I, I, you know, you don't gain nothing. 
it's it's just all part it's all part of the whole communist regime that's running this country now. Yeah. They they have taken control of the education with the Common Core. Uh, now they're into the medical, uh, the whole Common Core thing. Uh, even the teachers and in, in the systems don't really get the full grasp of what that Common Core is all about. It's not just about education. Uh, and these teachers said, and they're like, well, I know they changed it. They changed the way I teach a little bit. But other than that, it's not bad. Well, no, you think it ain't bad until uh, did you not see the part where now that uh, because your kid is, is on Common Core, uh, they'll come to your house and do home inspections. You know, somebody will show up at your house and, and your 85-year-old uh, mother lives there. You might have two or three kids. Uh, they show up. Maybe your house ain't that clean. Maybe they don't think you got enough food in your cabinet. Now what are they going to do? Guess what? Granny's going to the nursing home and your kids are going to juvenile services. All because of what? what what's that got to do with education? People don't understand. That's the kind of things that's in there that people don't even realize. Yeah. They just they don't realize it. Like I said and told you last night on the radio, <coughs> that's the main reason uh, our forefathers all came over here was to get away from the crap and you know. And here we are. We're in the middle. Uh, you got uh, those idiots down here in D.C. yesterday changed the rules, uh, and it's like nobody cares. Yeah. It's like what happened to the American people? Have we became so fat and lazy? We don't care. I mean, look over in Egypt. Those people took to the streets by the millions. You know, they didn't care if it was cold outside or there wasn't no bathroom facilities or their cell phone didn't work. You know what I mean? These people peacefully went out there and showed their support. Got that uh, the military went in there and locked that guy up. Mm -hmm. What you see all these rallies down in D.C. Nobody, nobody goes. Very few people. You know, you get you get poor guys. You got that uh, uh, Ernest Lee, uh, C.B. handles the general, his truck driver. He did that thousand man march where he was marching to D.C. Mm -hmm. And you know the poor guy uh, got a website. His wife was running it. Poor guy was pretty much bagging. You know, send me a couple bucks. You know, I'm a truck driver. I, you know, I got to pay my meals along. He got very little support. Uh, at the end of this march, he was going to be. Uh, he wanted to have a rally down there. Nobody even showed up for the rally. I mean, I don't. I, nobody cares. Now the poor guy uh, starts up. Uh, I won't say much about it because I don't know much about it. Uh, him and some of his other buddies uh, put out for donations mm -hmm. and they want to tour the United States from city to city. They're trying to set up uh, it's, uh, what that Mark Levy wrote that book about. Mm -hmm. It was about how you get three quarters of your states. You can change what's going right. on in D.C. So they're dr driving from state to state trying to organize it and get it set up for people. You know, he, there he is, he, he's begging. Uh, somebody finally gave him some money. They, they bought an old Winnebago for 3000 bucks. Got it running, throwed some spray paint on it, and started your tour. Cool. And guess what happens? Somebody bombed it. They're driving down the road in. They hear this funny noise. They all jump out. Uh, the engine compartment catches on fire. The road flares started dropping out and rolling out. Uh, within like mm -hmm. 10 minutes, the whole Winnebago was, was destroyed. Someone's trying to stop them. Yeah, definitely. You know, so you know the they, 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 trying to stop them. they said what they did was they probably <coughs> put all those in there knowing what would happen. Yeah, once they got more Probably time. trying to kill them. Yeah. Now there's that poor guy, you know, now they're stuck again. I, I do think they ended up with an old, uh, another little old camper or something. But I mean, why can't this guy get support? I mean, all these rich people out there in this country. You see all these uh, these rich people, oh yeah man, I, I, I'm a gun lover and you ain't taking my gun and I'll use my money to defend it and I'll do this. What a, one of these rich guys, get a hold of this guy and give him a couple hundred thousand bucks. Get him out there and let him, you know, help the guy. I mean, it's, I, I just, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. People are all going to be a revolution. It ain't going to be a revolution. American people's too fat and lazy to get up off the couch and go do something. Yeah. You know, they just take what's given to them. 
for sure. I mean, I I sit back and I myself, I, I'm you know I'm at the age where you know I grew up. Uh, every day in school, you had to uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. Yeah, me too. I remember when we had the uh, air raid drills where we had to hide under a desk in school. I grew up with that. And actually, yeah. when you did the American Legion to the flag or whatever, you felt proud. Oh, yeah. You felt your heart to do that. And, you know, I come from those times, and you love your country. And you know what? W whatever happened, nobody anymore cares. Mm -hmm. they, they say 47% of people is on some kind of uh, government assistance. Now what are they going to do? I mean, you've got to have taxpayer to pay these people. Right. By the time Obama's done, ain't nobody going to have a job. Yeah. Where, where are you going to get the money at to feed the, the needy? I, I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Something needs to be done. Uh, there's already been a lot of Facebook pages. There's a lot of good pages on there uh, of, of groups trying to wake up America. You know, and they even said it's it's beyond voting now. Voting just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That last election, there was so much corrupt in that voting. Uh, it's like nobody really cared to even go back and and let, let's recount. Yeah. You know, there's already there's literally been people prosecuted over that's doing time right now in jail over. But yet it it they didn't do the outcome of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe the guy that's in there now shouldn't be in there. Yeah, it might not be in there. It should be. In there. And that's why this country's in the state that it is. Yep, I agree. It's my water chief is boiling, yeah. I don't think she's boiling, bro. It's got bubbles over there, boiling. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that fire. Some of these things are just too big. Bro, I can break them more. Well, let's get that fat guy from Preppers. Let's step on the floor. I think if you wrap tar on that and duct tape, it will burn better. I said, it burn better with the tar on that gear tape, you know what's Yeah, you gotta get this tar on there. You get your yeah. real thick and you just duct tape it. Yeah. It'll get right in there. It'll burn. It's like a, one of those uh, burning logs. Yeah. Oh, that's Cook your hot dog oh, with yeah. that coffee. Oh, yeah. I thought, too, there's a wood chip there. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, pretty deep. I've seen that. There's all kinds of stuff up there. Yeah. I'm looking there, I don't care. Talking about four on his knees. Getting burned out by road flares. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Don't let it hit the pot belly stove, or we'll be in trouble. There you go. Look at that. We're just finding all kinds of goodies in there. Yeah, God knows what's in here. I'll lay this over out of the way, or I'll accidentally stick it in the fire by mistake. Yeah, I'm just a log. I'll put it over by the breakfast box in case it starts sparking. I see our camera's straight. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty straight. Is it even turned on, or are we talking to ourselves? No, it's running. It looks cockeyed to me. Yeah, I said it. I don't know what to do. You broke it before you broke it. Well, I definitely did. It is a little cockeyed there. Yeah, it is. It's Let me take it off this uh, thing here. So if, if you're watching this video, just turn your head sideways. We'll just slightly to the yeah. web. Right? Yeah. We'll look a lot better that way. That's what you even got a tour there. That's being broke target. Yeah. Maybe we should call Quiz. Yeah. Do a little bit of the house. Yeah, we'll go down and get you guys a tour of the house. Yeah. We just basically been rambling on about nothing. All right. And that'd be pretty boring if somebody was watching it. Well, I'd cut it down and put, like, interesting parts and get some of it out. I'll do that tomorrow. Evening. Well, that's the sad thing. There was no interesting part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Watching some old guy make a cup of instant coffee. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Got my heart to racing. <laughs> well, see, I think I'm going to take this cup and smear some tar around it and then duct tape it. It'll be, like, insulated. There you go. And I won't have to worry about my coffee getting cold. It'll some of the sheets out of won't, won't put a hole in my cup. Yep, that'll work. All right, so I think we're going to wrap this uh, episode up. All right, you want to do the motto? Don't be, be scared, scared. Be, be prepared. prepared. All right. And remember what Cy always says, work hard, nap hard. Work hard, nap hard. Never heard that one, but I oh, like yeah, it. Yeah, that's okay. Work hard, Yeah, I like hard. it. Check out the pot belly stew. There you go. And it's toasty in here. Oh, it's so toasty. All right, YouTubers, goodbye.